I want to call up one of those, right? You know, let me know I'm from Victorville, and uh, you know, just cuss her out over the phone. You know, it wouldn't make it wouldn't make it on the air, but at least she would hear it. This time the pictures are going to come out. Oh, good. I'm relieved. I am. Here, I'm going to get orange juice. Fish, come on now. No. We've got a hell of a crowd out there, don't you? We've got a hell of a crowd. Let them know we got a crowd. I'm never going to agree to a deal like that again, Bill. Uh, Maybe you can be my attorney next time I negotiate one of these deals, huh? You don't need an attorney, Tom. Let me tell you, I, I've got news for you. So what's the plan for this morning? Well, we got a lot of great topics coming up today, all suggested by the listeners. And we're going to start off after the news this morning. We're going to ask people to call in with the secrets you promised somebody you'd never... Is anyone else agree? Is this in the afternoon as you head home. Hey, stick with us. It's going to be a wild show today. We're coming to you live from Gladstones for Fish on the Pacific Coast Highway in the Pacific Palisades. We're right here at the foot of Sunset Boulevard, and we've got a hell of a crowd here. Let everybody know we've got a big crowd. Um, I've been doing Saturdays now for about two years uh, here at KFI, and... Um, Finally, I got lucky. I just signed a new three-year contract, and I'm going to be here another three years. But one of the concessions that we got out of the station is that I don't have to get up and be here at 9 o'clock in the morning anymore. So we decided to celebrate by having a live show because, uh, what was it, two weeks ago, we asked people to call in on Saturday and tell us uh, what they wanted us to do for a final Saturday program. And what we decided to do, because you asked us to do it, <laughs> and people who asked us to do it are here, by the way. Right. But we got letters and things. Uh, they said, do it live somewhere. And people had very bizarre suggestions. I think the weirdest was a woman in Gloria in Reseda who wanted us to do it at a really, um, I better be careful how I say this, a, uh, <clears throat> A club called the Country Club in Reseda, which, well, put it this way, not the most upscale place in town, okay? But uh, we decided to do it in a nice place. We can see the ocean from here, and that's why we decided to do it from here today. It's a nice yeah. view. Everybody can get here, and you're welcome to come down. We'll be here till 1 o'clock this afternoon, and what we're going to do is um, we're going to be inviting you to come over uh, on the Pacific Coast Highway and just drop by. Uh, you can have a food, drink. It's all here. Uh, just take Sunset Boulevard as far west as you can, and you'll be at Gladstones. That's it. Uh, we're right on the water here. Um, we have picked four topics, uh, three of which you've asked us to do, and one of which uh, we're going to do for our own purposes, and we'll tell you what that's going to be. Uh, in our first hour, this is one that was suggested. This was my favorite of all the ones that were called in. And remember, you're doing this for an audience, uh, not only on the air, but a live audience here that is watching. Um, we're going to ask you to call in with secrets you promised a friend you'd never tell. <laughs> but you're now prepared to betray them in front of 300,000 listeners. That's one of your hungry Gladstones. So um, let's, let's get it on here, everybody. Here's the telephone number in L.A. in the Valley. It's 5201-KFI. 
from the 213 or the 818 area codes, it's 5201 KFI. Or call us toll free from Orange County or the Inland Empire at 1 800 553 4640. So if you're in the 714 area code, 619 or 805, just call 1 800 553 4640. We will pay for your telephone call and put you on the air. And we're going to get to the telephone calls as quickly as we possibly can. I remind people here that if they've got a secret they'd like to betray this morning, we will give you the opportunity, as we will with all of the other topics we're going to do as the morning progresses. So if you've got a secret and you want to betray a friend today, uh, we'll give you the opportunity during this hour. Uh, coming up, uh, and these are, again, topics that were suggested by you, uh, in the 10 o'clock hour this morning, we're going to ask you to tell us the weirdest place you ever had sex. And uh, that was suggested by a listener, the weirdest place you ever had sex. We'll talk about that between 10 and 11 o'clock this morning. Uh, at 11 o'clock, we're going to do, in addition, this is something we've done on the uh, Saturday show many times. And, uh, in fact, uh, one of these programs got us in the hot water with the Federal Communications Commission, so we'll be screening carefully. We're going to do another edition of Radio Confessions, where you can call in and confess to Father Lycus this morning. And I'll be That'll be coming up between 11 and 12. And then at 12 o'clock today, uh, we're going to ask you, and this is not one that was suggested by a listener, this is the one for our purposes. We're going to ask you to call in and tell us your favorite Saturday show ever. Now, the reason I'm asking this question is because next Saturday they've given us one more show where I will not be here. I will be away in Arizona next weekend. But they've given us one more show where we can... Um, pick our favorite Saturday shows from the past year, and we can run an hour of each of four. So you'll have a chance to tell us which ones were your favorites on Saturday. All right, now please don't call in and talk about uh, test ban treaties or... I, I love that when I ask people to call in with their favorite Saturday show, they're going, why don't you talk about abortion? Oh, come on, get with the program here, okay? <laughs> Saturday show's a little different. Generally, I try to stay away from hard issues because I'm barely awake on Saturday and don't feel like reading the paper until I leave. Uh, but uh, we're going to uh, find out what your favorites were, and then we're going to try to find them and play them next Saturday between 9 in the morning and 1 in the afternoon. That's going to be coming up next Saturday on Memorial Day weekend. So that's what we've got planned for today. That's our agenda. You can come down and participate in the program. You can just sit back and listen at home, or you can just come down and watch and hide in the background and pretend I can't see you, but I see everybody, okay? <laughs> 5201 KFI is our number in LA and the Valley, so toll free from Orange County or the Inland Empire, 1 800 553 4640. And we're going to find out this hour. Here are the secrets you promised a friend you'd never tell. But now you're going to betray your friend right here live on the air. Let's start with Bob in Huntington Beach on KFI. Good morning, Bob. Good morning, Tom. How are you? Good. Say hi to the crowd here this morning. Hello, everyone. Hi. Yay! Yeah, I got a hot one for you either. All right. All right, I had this uh, uh, girl that I was working with, and we also had another co-worker that she, that they were mutually attracted to each other. Wait, there's a girl, wait, let me, I want to understand this story. Okay, there's a girl you work with. Yeah. You said we. Is there another person involved here? Yeah. Also, there's another co-worker who is a guy. All right. There's a girl you work with, and there's a guy you work with. Right. All right. Go ahead. They uh, were became usually attracted to each other, and there has been... Uh, wait, 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 wait. Before you go on, were they married to anybody or involved with anybody? <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm just saying. Well, you got to get to the important part of the story here. Now, that's what makes it interesting. Okay. Were they both married? Okay. Were they, wait a minute, wait a minute, Bob. Were they both married? They both live with somebody. All right. Each of these people, they work with you. They each live with other people. Right. All right. Go ahead. All right. Well, go. there was mutual attraction, and after a brief uh, various flirtations back and forth, they uh, met together and... They met together? Became well, where did they do this, Bob? Uh, some nearby motel in Orange County area. Orange County. Can we get first names on these people, please? <laughs> well, I don't know if they went to the camp or not. Come on, Bob. You promised a secret. Now, who are we talking about here? Yeah, Bob. Okay. <laughs> Julie? Brian. And Brian. All right, Julie and Brian in Orange County, they each live with other people, and they showed up at a hotel and met and got intimate. Now, how did you find out about this, Bob? Well, from uh, Julie. Julie told you. How close are you with Julie, Bob? Well, I asked me 
when I call you back in another day or so. Oh, is that another secret? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> so Julie told you that uh, Julie and Brian got together and their uh, respective uh, <coughs> apostle cues didn't know about this. Is that what you're saying? That's true. Unbelievable. Now how do you feel now that you revealed this secret and betrayed your good friend Julie? Well, it was a, uh, interesting enough story out there. Well, th now, are there any more details about this story, Bob, that we need to know about? Uh, so Did they just get together at the hotel one time? I think it was a couple times. A couple of times. <laughs> and they vowed never again. And, oh, they vowed never again, so they've gone back to the people they live with. Yeah, they and, they're, and each is hoping that uh, their paramour will not find out. Exactly. Well, hopefully they don't listen to KFI, Bob. <laughs> That's all I can say. Right. Well, Bob, you've stunned the audience this morning. Thank you for calling. Have a great day. Okay, you too. Take care. Bye-bye. All right, you understand how this works. You call in and you tell the secret you promised you'd never tell. And we'll continue with your telephone calls coming up. 5201 KFI in LA of the Valleys. 5201 KFI. We're toll free from Orange County or the Inland Empire. 1-800-553-4. Four, six, I'm Tom Likas, our final Saturday morning broadcast at 917. This is KFI AM 640. Time now to go to the KFI Traffic Center and say good morning to Liz Fulton. Oh, good morning to you, Tom. 22, Saturday morning live. I'm Tom Likas. This is KFI AM 640. Thank you for this morning. This is the Palisades, our last Saturday show ever. The way the topics you suggested this hour, the secrets you promised a friend you'd never tell, but now you're going to betray that friend right here on the air. Here's Michelle in Monrovia on KFI. Good morning. Good morning. Morning, Michelle. How are you? Oh, I just finally wanted to hear. It's so bad that I'm doing the wedding today. I can't come. Oh, I'm sorry. My secret is, um, I was married, and this was against my ex-husband. Promise I'd never tell. He was an athletic trainer for a professional football team. Uh-huh. Is this one in Southern California? Yes, it is. All right, so it's only one of three possibilities. Okay. All right. And um, uh, one of his lifelong fantasies, he told me, was after football game, he wanted to go to the training room, and he wanted to make love to me on the training table. On the training table? I wore my old training dress. This wasn't at Anaheim Stadium, was it? <laughs> Well, all right, that's only two possibilities left. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Anyway, oh, it gets better. It does, it gets better. It gets better. All right, you're in the Coliseum on the training table. What happened? <laughs> no, you didn't, but I did. Go ahead. <laughs> I had my, my cheerleading shirt on from when I was a cheerleader. Wait, wait, you were, were you a cheerleader for this professional team, or was that going back to high school? That goes back to high school. You have your high school cheerleading outfit on, and you're at the training table at the Coliseum, all right? Yeah. Well, that's what I said. <laughs> that's your ex-husband. He's the one who gets in trouble. Go ahead. <laughs> I see. Uh, on the table. Yeah. And we're, we're, we're having fun. And I don't want to say the name, but a very professional football player who has the initial M A. M A. M A. Oh, well, I'm not. No, don't. No, no, see, people are shouting his name out. We know which one you're talking about. <laughs> but go ahead. This is at the Coliseum. M.A. is in the Coliseum in the training room. Yeah. Go ahead. And, uh, well, You were in a uh, training room in a uh, professional stadium somewhere in Southern California, somewhere. across from USC, with no parking. <laughs> a bunch of guys wearing silver and black. <laughs> His initials were M.A. <laughs> I'm sorry. I can tell. You really sound remorseful about this, Michelle. Yeah, I, I wanted to tell a lot of people, and I, and I thought about calling later when you have your story on the worst place you've ever had sex. Oh yeah, well this kind of fits both of them, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I, really like so I, uh, I have to uh, be early, but I wish you all the best. I love well, the show. Thank I love you. Last night. I'm sorry, sorry. Oh,
Oh, you saw me on 2020 last night? Yes, I did. Oh, good. Oh, thank you. It's black. Yes, you know. Well, one more thing, Michelle. Since he's your ex-husband, did he ever, like, uh, fudge on his taxes or anything like that? I don't think Not that we could figure out who he is by what you've told us. Well, fine. I got the idea. Michelle, thank you for the call today. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye. It's 926 here at KFI AM 640. It's our last Saturday program. And people are calling with the secrets they promised they'd never tell. But now they are betraying the people closest to them. Here is Dorothy in Fontana on KFI. Hello. Hi, Dorothy. Well, thank you. I'm not going to miss getting up, though. I'm going to enjoy the new 17-hour Bill Handel show. It's going to be very exciting. I'm going to get bed enjoying it. I want to tell you right now. Yes. Well, let me tell you something. This is a secret that goes way back. Guys, 40 years. 40 years? Yep. I wasn't even born yet, Dorothy. I know. When I caught my sister lying in sex with my brother's boyfriend. Your sister-in-law was having sex with your brother's boyfriend? Yeah. Uh, your brother is gay? No. What do you mean your brother's boyfriend? <laughs> well, I should say you mean brother's boyfriend? It sounds like they're lovers or something. <laughs> That's what a boyfriend is, isn't it? <laughs> all right. You're si now, let me, all right. Now I was confused. Let me go back again. Your sister was having sex with your brother's friend. Yeah. My sister-in-law. Your sister-in-law. Yeah. All right. So in other words, this is the woman who was married to your brother. Right. All right. She was having sex with a friend of his. Yeah. And uh, how did you find out about this? Well, I usually have to stick. By the way. And I was out there on business, and I thought, and I thought, well, I'll stop by and see if he wants to go to the dinner for our brother. Yeah. You know, on the weekend, next weekend. Yes. And I, all oh, I had to go out and, uh, the seat off the road, so I drove down through the pine trees and stopped, got out and walked up to the house, and through the picture window, here was me too in front of the fireplace. Oh, I see. So, uh, you were sworn to secrecy on this? I told her I wouldn't tell. But you just did. Yeah. I got a little children. How do you feel now? Oh, it doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> they have. Yeah. Are they having any affairs? Are they having any affairs now you want to tell us about? I have no idea. Alright. I just... to thank you. We had a baby eight months later, we've always wanted to eyeball Oh, really? Oh, now you didn't tell us that part of the story, Dorothy. Well, it looks just like her. Well, I hope it looks like her, but what about its father? We don't know, I don't know. You can't tell by looking. No. Oh, boy. <laughs> well, you're a veritable fountain of information, Dorothy. Thank you for calling. Well, do you feel better now that you've told? It doesn't bother you. I think you would have, if I did this show 20 years ago, you would have called in and talked about this, I would be. I don't think so. Because I have been questioned about you Oh, you have? Yeah. And you kept it a secret? I said, no, I don't know. How would I know? So you saved yourself for me, did you, Dorothy? Yeah. Thank you for that. Well, you just did, Dorothy. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for the call. Okay. All right. Have a good day. Bye-bye now. Okay. We're going to continue with more of your calls. We're looking for people to call with the secrets. They promised they'd never tell. Did you ever promise somebody that you wouldn't tell a secret? Well, you could betray them right now. You're on the air. 5201-KFI is our telephone number in L.A. and the Valleys. We're only doing this the first hour today, so if you've got one, call us 5201-KFI. Or toll free from Orange County or the Inland Empire, dial 1-800-553-4640. I'm Tom Likas. It's 930 in Los Angeles. This is KFI AM 640. Time to go to the KFI News Center where Liz Fulton is standing by with a look at the stories. You'll be hearing more about it at 10 o'clock. Good morning, Liz. Good morning, Tom. We're going to talk about Four, 26 before 10 o'clock, Tom Likers, live over KFI AM 640. 
It's our final Saturday program. Thank you for coming out today. What a crowd. Tell me this crowd been here since 7 o'clock this morning and watch people having their first beer of the morning. It's very nice. The debauchery we're causing here is just amazing. Of course, I've got my uh, orange juice here this morning. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what can I say? Anyway, uh, what we're doing here today are four different topics in four hours, three of which were suggested by you, the listeners. Uh, this hour, it's the secret you promised a friend you'd never tell. Now you're calling in betraying your friend live on the air at 5201-KFI in L.A. and the Valleys, or toll-free at 1-800-553-4640. And coming up after the news at 10, of course, we may have had the best one already, I don't know. But after, <laughs> after the news at 10, the weirdest places you ever had sex, and if it's the training table at the Coliseum, don't bother calling him, we already have that one. <laughs> at 11 o'clock, it's Radio Confessions, your chance to call in and confess to the high priest of radio here and uh, get your penance. And then uh, at 12 o'clock, you'll vote for your favorite Saturday show of all time. And uh, we'll try to find the best and the, your favorites, and we'll try to, which may not be the same, by the way. And we will play them next weekend in this very time slot while I'm out of town. Thank you for tuning in today. Let's continue. Here's Scott in Rancho Cucamonga on KFI. Hello, Scott. How you doing, Joe? Bye. Bye. Joe! <laughs> Great. Uh, now, one of the guys' names for this uh, Joe hasn't even gone to bed yet from last night. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I'm sorry. Okay, first well, You I'm should be so. Five guys, five guys that I'm betraying. You're betraying five guys? <laughs> Two. All at once. One of their names oh, is awesome. Joe, and the other four, I can't name, but I can name Joe. That's why I was thinking Joe, which, which one I can name. Oh, I see. Okay, now, this happened, this is uh, an accident. Uh, it involved murder. And, uh, it's not going to be, uh, no death river or anything. Wait a minute. There, there are five guys. One of them is Joe, and it involved murder. Right. Alright, go ahead. Okay, well, I, I was in the service, uh, in Southern, Southern California. And, uh, I Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, stop right there. Didn't you call in on the Phil Hendry show once? Yes, I did. Oh. Alright, this is a rerun, but go ahead and tell the story. Okay. Uh, and it was an accident involving uh, it's a type of artillery called a mortar. And it uh, were projectiles or are uh, launched from uh, you know one position and they have a high angle and they drop for shooting over mountains. Yeah. And we're at a night we were at a night range and the other guys, uh, Joe and the other four guys were on my gun. And uh, we were having a break in our firing sequence and uh, Joe was the guy with the night vision. And he looked down and he saw like a, what you call like a little fire or, or uh, something like that. So when we had our, our next sequence of fire, yeah. all we did is we just fire off the range so nobody knows exactly where we're firing. It's all, it's all cordoned off the area. So it's safe to fire out there. So we set our gun and we fired on that on that little position just, just to see if we could hit it, you know, whatever it was. So uh, we fired it and we fired about 10 rounds. And, uh, you know, Joe was on the rocks, and he said he thought we got kind of close to it, but you know, it was just one of those things. Well, later on down the road, probably about a, a week and a half, it came out the paper for a, uh, a band of illegal aliens that were trying to cross the border using that rain had been, uh, had been involved in a uh, firing. And there was about 15, they said between 10 and 15 people. 10 to 15 illegal aliens were murdered. Right. By your five buddies. And me. So that's, that's now, can I ask you a question, Scott? I heard you tell this story a long time ago when there was a Bill Henry show you called in. Right. Why have you kept this a secret? Well, mainly because uh, I didn't want to go to jail. What, were you involved? Well, yeah, I was uh, control on the gun. I was the one who put the cord on the gun and the one who gives the command fire. It's kind of like, it's kind of like an officer. Uh, whenever uh, a unit does something, the officer, even though the officer may not have done it exactly himself, he's going to charge those people. And I was going to charge the five people. And you knew people. they were doing this? Well, yeah, I was in well, see, We didn't know exactly what it was. We just saw, saw the light. He said, you know, uh, let's, you know, let's see if we can get closer. We didn't know if it was a brush fire that we started. So, you know, down at the, at the uh, uh, 
military base where I was, they, you know, fresh fires were prevalent. You know? Well, wait a minute, uh, you, you've called two talk shows in six months. It really sounds like you want to tell this to somebody. Well, I do, but, you know, now, now that kind of, I'm out of service. And, you know there is no statute of liberty, uh, no statute of limitation on murder. You know that, don't right? But now that I'm now, that means the rest of your life you're going to be calling talk shows. <laughs> and <telling the> story. <laughs> so I still have to get it off my chest. Yeah, I guess. Unbelievable. You want to turn yourself in, Scott? I know I did. So it was an accident. Okay, it would be a different story. Yeah, well, tell it to the judge, okay? <laughs> All right, I thought I was doing that today, though. All right, hey, Scott, uh, well, yeah, well, you, well yeah, Scott, if I were the judge, you'd be in jail, let me tell you. Right. You should have come down in person and told that story. Yeah, <laughs> I'll bet you can't. Thank you for the call. Not at all. Take care. Bye-bye. Yeah. Oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. Oh, Barbara in Anaheim, uh, you're on KFI. Hello. Hi, Barbara. Now that Scott has cast a pallor over the entire crowd here, <laughs> as they're imagining the 15 illegal aliens that were murdered and he was responsible, yes. Oh, unless there's nothing like that. Well, I'm sure it's not. It's a birthday celebration that got a little wild. A birthday celebration? <laughs> Whose birthday was it? Uh, mine. Your birthday. <laughs> My best friend. And your best friend who was female. Yes. Okay. And we went to Palm Springs to celebrate our birthday. Uh huh. And which we did every year. And um, this, I mean, tomorrow, uh, this is like several years ago, like probably seven or eight years ago. We used to borrow um, a relative of her condo. And, you know, they were pretty wealthy and had one of those condos and one of those nice country clubs and everything. And we went out dancing that night and did a couple of Nice guys. We were several years younger than Wait, wait, wait. When you say several years younger, oh. how old were you? Oh, we were, no, we were about 25. And how old were they? They were about 25. Oh, well, that's... So, I mean, it was... I thought you were going to tell me 15. <laughs> <laughs> it was getting very interesting for a second. They were at a bar. They were at a bar. Being at a bar doesn't mean anything. Come on. Have you heard a big ID? Come on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, so you're at the bar, you're 25, it's your birthday, they're 21, and you're in Palm Springs. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, yeah. we went back to the condo and went to the church and, um, you know, they didn't have babies or anything with the red art condo, so, but, um, then we went back So, what were they wearing? Well, whatever you're wearing, uh, Okay. All right. A towel? A t-shirt? No. Nothing. Right. Thank you. All right, so you're in the uh, hot tub with these two guys, 21 years old, uh -huh. who don't have bathing suits. Right, but we did. You were just being helpful. You had bathing suits. Yeah, we did. Well, that makes it better. And then, and then we went back over to the condo after we were in the hot tub for a while, and um, we had a couple of bottles of wine. So yeah. My son and I know nothing about wine, so, you know, we drank several, we, we were just opening bottles of wine right and left. Oh, you were learning about wine that night. <laughs> so we thought, oh, we'll just replace the wine before we leave after the weekend. Oh, what, were you in the uh, survey bar there or something with the key? You were opening no, up a little no. Oh, no, refrigerator? No, it was for relatives. Oh, I thought you were in, like, a hotel out there or something. You were in somebody else's condo. Yeah. And you were drinking the wine out of their cabin. Yeah. All right. And you got the two 21-year-olds there with no bathing suits. Right. All right. And then, um, we could have cut to the next day after Well, why are we cutting to the next day? It sounds like the secret uh, came between the uh, night and the next day, didn't it? Yeah, it did. It did. Yeah. All right. Use your own imagination, everybody. What do you think happened? Sex, yes, that's what they said, sex. They were trying to keep it clean for me. Thank you, everybody. We know what you really wanted to say, you know what I'm saying? We know what you wanted to say. Anyway, go ahead. And then the next day we had to um, go and replace all the bottles of wine that we had. And then we had to go and try to Who were you keeping this secret from? I'm curious. Well, my friend and I used to never tell anybody. Why? Oh, no. I mean, what was the secret? That you drank your friend's wine in the condo? No, that wasn't the The secret was that you had sex with two 21-year-old guys with no bathing suits. Yeah, yeah that was the secret. And you kept that secret? Yeah. Well, why were you afraid somebody might find that out? I'm curious. Well, I looked at the monster that you were, you know, like, women or something. Yeah. Do they lose women? Yeah! Thank you.
Sorry, the verdict is in. Thank you for the call, Barbara. Okay. Take care. Okay, bye, Tommy. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yeah, oh, thank you for that. We'll continue. 9.44, 16 minutes before 10 o'clock. I'm Tom Likas, live from Gladstone's over KFI AM 640. When we got home, things didn't seem right. First floor open, on now. Rick, there's a lot of free trips to the U.S. Tank Club and the New York via Midway Airlines. So purchase necessary. Registered now at all 11 Fort Worth locations. Don't miss it. 947, 13 before 10 o'clock. Tom Likas, live from Gladstone's this morning over KFI. We're coming to you from Gladstone's for Fish on the Pacific Coast Highway and Pacific Palisades this morning. And cars are still coming in. You are welcome to stop by and see us. Just take Sunset Boulevard as far west as it goes. And that's where we are this morning. We're continuing with the secrets you promised a friend you'd never tell. But now you're going to betray them live on the air. Here's Stacy in Malibu on KFI. Hi, Stacy. Hi, Tom. How are you? Wonderful. I'm calling you from the Stacy, uh, what's the big secret? Okay, Tom, this is my secret. Now, I have a very good friend of mine, and her name is Randy. Randy? She's not here today, is she? I don't know. Probably not. She's running around in her sea straight, but this is the story, Tom. Okay, Stacy. I'm caught in heaven for this guy, and she tried everything in order to seduce him. Well, you know what she told her, and she confided this in me. She didn't know if she should do it or not, all right? She ordered her, saved her entire Wait, I couldn't hear that, Stacy. She did it. She did it. She did it. She did it, and then they did it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> now, any woman will tell you, put on a pair of pantyhose after that experience, and it is not fun. <laughs> Unbelievable. Now, Stacy, you promised not to tell this. Do you feel better now? I feel so much better, Tom. My conscience is relieved. All right. Well, Stacy, thank you for calling in from the other side of Gladstone's here today. <laughs> Okay, we'll see you in a minute. There goes Stacy. <laughs> Unbelievable. Here's Susan in Studio City on KFI. Good morning, Susan. Hi, Tom. I have some dirt to divulge today. You've got some good dirt for us, I take it. Okay. All right, what is it? I used to be friends with a couple, uh, a male and a female, and I kind of got caught in the middle because he would tell me the stories that I was not supposed to tell her. Yes. He used to work at a place like Chippendales, not Chippendales, but a different one. He was a male exotic dancer. Uh-huh. Some of the women in the audience get off the worked up during the show. Yeah. So after the show, when he was leaving to go to his car in the parking lot, uh-huh. He used to get attacked by hordes of women. He did. Yes, they would attack him and do all sorts of terrible things to him in the parking lot. Well, were these terrible things they were doing to him, or <laughs> is that just a matter of speaking? That's a matter of speaking. <laughs> all right, now what's the big secret? That's the secret, because I wasn't supposed to tell his girlfriend that he was getting attacked Wait a minute. on a routine basis. His girlfriend thought that he went and did this dance number and that nobody came near him? He used to go and watch. Well, wait, what did she think was going on in the parking lot? He used to leave early, I guess, because he was there late. <laughs> so when these women attacked him in the parking lot, did he say, oh, no, don't do that to me, I'm a professional guy? He said he was outnumbered. He was outnumbered. <laughs> I've used that one. <laughs> that one's good. Also, in radio, the one is good where you say, I had some production to do when I was at work till about 3 in the morning. Um, same on you. That's a good one. <laughs> I'm single now, so it doesn't matter. Thank you for the call, Susan. Take care. Bye-bye. We'll continue. 9.52, 8 minutes before 10 o'clock. Tom Like is live from Gladstone's over KFI AM 640. <laughs> Clock 
Tom Like is live over KFI AM 640. We're live from Gladstones in Pacific Palisades for our last Saturday morning program this week. crowd here today too. It's great. Let's continue with Kelly in La Habra on KFI. Hi Kelly. Hi Tom. How are you? This is really a break. I came this close to hang up. Ooh. I'm glad you hung in. Is it that good? This is really, this is really, it's a kind of secret. My best friend doesn't know. Nobody knows. This is a good one. All right. A male friend. Yeah. You know how that male friend thing goes, right? Yeah. Okay. And it was one of those, you know, real close with, honestly, together, but you don't, because it would ruin your friend, you know, that whole thing. Yeah, I know that whole thing, yeah. <laughs> well, I've, I've ruined more friendships with people who wouldn't sleep with me than those who would, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, anyway, go ahead. A couple times, but it never really, like, went through the whole thing. Okay, I understand. So, in between, I had a relationship, and then I broke up with that relationship. And he got engaged to a girl that I had known. I didn't like this girl at all. I went to high school with her. How did I know you were going to say that? She was a real bitch, right? <laughs> How did I know? Was a bitch to everybody. They always are, aren't they? <laughs> they had an attitude, you know? Yeah. Anyway, so, you know, we had been friends this whole thing, and after I had broken up, it was like, well, we're a little older, and we've known each other a long time. I still would like to. But he's getting married the whole bit. Well, he came back, he came to my workplace one day, and he said, well, I don't know if I can. He said, well, I'm going to make you much of the apartment. You know, and it's one of those things where you know and he knows. Right. Was he engaged or married at this point? He was two weeks away from getting married. Two weeks away from getting married, and he's over at your place. No, we're going to his place. You're going to his place. This is the apartment he rented for after... Oh, this is the apartment where they were going to move when they got married. Yeah. And it's two weeks before they got married, and there you are, and you're playing dumb. You're pretending you don't know what's about to happen. But I do. You do. Now, of course. But you, you rationalize. Wait, let me guess. You rationalize the whole thing because she was a real bitch anyway. Yeah, it gets worse. It gets worse. So we went to the apartment with all new furniture. I mean, some stuff is not even out of the box. Uh huh. The bedroom furniture was so new, Tom. Yeah. How new was it? It was so new. There was plastic covering dogs of mattress. This, by the way, was the furniture that she picked out, right? Of course. Of course. She spent all that time. This bitch went to the furniture store and chose <laughs> each piece individually. Yeah. But she was a bitch, so you didn't mind. I didn't mind. Okay. Okay. Anyway, so the bed was so near it had plastic covering. Right. So we ended up like doing it on the bed. Okay. On the bed with the plastic on. Right. Now, you know, it's like, okay, you know, we'll never tell. We can rationalize it because you're not married yet. And we're best good plan. You know, the whole bit? Right. So what I did was I had, um, I was using birth control. And I had used stuff at the very last of the, of the jelly. So I rolled up the, the tube and I left it on the dresser. Whoa! Screaming in the background, does that mean you didn't have enough jelly left? <laughs> 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 uh huh. I, I think, I'm pretty sure she probably found it. You think she did? <laughs> oh, yeah. And I kind of left a, a couple of other, what do you call them, telltale signs in the bathroom. Hey, I'll bet you did that on purpose because she was a bitch, right? Was a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, it is, Kelly. Somebody said you're the bitch. <laughs> 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 
other than Joe Crummy. McDonald. Joe's on vacation. John Mellicard, well, he's here today at 4 o'clock, and then Dr. Laura Schlesinger at 8 o'clock tonight. That's our lineup here on KFI AM 640. Thank you for tuning in today. We will be doing this again. Uh, by the way, coming up later in this program today, uh, after the news at 11 o'clock, we're going to be um, having another edition of Radio Confessions, your opportunity to call in and confess your sins. You see, Catholics are the only ones who get that opportunity to kind of check into the booth and confess, <laughs> unload their problems. We're going to make it a lot easier for all of you who are not Catholic today, because Father Likas is going to be taking confessions between 11 and 12 today. It is Saturday morning, that's when you do that kind of thing, right? So we're going to be doing that today. If you have sinned recently, be prepared to call in. And uh, I thank you very much for tuning in today. Thank you for being here. Uh, and then coming up after the news at 12 o'clock, we're going to be uh, asking you for the favorite Saturday show you've heard. And uh, next Saturday, we're going to try to pick four one-hour segments of your four favorite Saturday programs. That's going to be coming up after the news at 12 here on KFI AM 640. Okay, so that's what's coming up for the rest of the program. There um, are people still coming into Gladstones today. We welcome you to come out here and see us in person. There's no admission charge to come over, uh, but uh, there's food and drink available. People are drinking at 10 o'clock in the morning. What are we drinking today? There's a screwdriver over there. Uh-huh. And I see beer. There's a Michelob Dry, a Bloody Mary. Oh, they're all over the place. Another Bloody Mary. This is amazing. What is that? Scotch and water at 10 o'clock in the morning. Who wants your name right now? Anyway, okay, we're ready to roll here. Uh, we want you to tell us in this hour, again, these are topics suggested by the listeners. Uh, tell us the weirdest places you ever had sex. The weirdest places you ever had sex. Now, obviously, there's nothing dirty about this because we're just talking about places. We're not talking about graphic depictions of anything. Graphically depicted. We'll do that in person here later on if you want, but uh, not on the air. Anyway, here are the telephone numbers. L.A. and the Valley's. 5201 KFI is our number from the 213 or the 818 area codes. The number is 5201 KFI. And on Saturday morning, for some reason, people um, are a little yep. slow and they leave the 520 number to, to rock. I don't understand that, but uh, you can dial 5201 KFI and be on the air. Uh, if you live in Orange County or the Inland Empire, you can call us toll free at 1 800 553 4640. If you're in the 714 area code, 619 or 805. Call 1-800-553-4640. We will pay for your telephone call, though it's rarely worth it. And we will put you on the air. All right, let's go to the telephones here. The weirdest places you ever had sex. Here's Sandy in Riverside on KFI. Hello. Hi. I have this building. In a bank building? Uh-huh. Were you outside the building on the roof? or were you inside the building on a desk. You were on a desk in a bank building? Where was this? Since we've gone this far, what bank building are we talking about? <laughs> Come on, Sandy. <laughs> oh, it was a long time ago. Now, tell me how you ended up in a bank building. I had a friend that was to clean up the bank building. Oh, he was a janitor. <laughs> Sanitary engineer. Is that what they call him these days? Yeah. Okay. So he was a he was a sanitary engineer at a bank building. Uh huh. All right. And what happened? Uh, I don't know. He's just there. He just like put off the table and put on it, and the guys were all and everything. Wow. And um, 
Did you ever want to do it again after that, or was that the last time you... Uh, that was the last time. That was it. That was the weirdest place. Uh-huh. Do you feel better now that you've told somebody? Uh, yeah, I've told a few people, but it's like... <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> Are you looking for new architecture to work on now? <laughs> Suspension bridge or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's thinking about it. Look at that. Well, thank you, Sandy. Appreciate the call. Let's continue here. We're getting the weirdest places you've ever had sex. Here's Bill in Chatsworth on KFI. Hello, Bill. Hello, Tom. How are you doing? Okay, how are you? I got, I got a great, great story to tell you. Um, I used to work at NBC, right? You did what for NBC? I used to work at NBC. You worked at NBC. What did you do there? I was, I was a PA there. You are a PA at NBC. Right. That's a production assistant for the well, initiative. I, I, I can't tell you what show because you used to make fun of the show. <laughs> oh, okay. We won't mention It's Fritz by name. <laughs> we wouldn't want to embarrass anybody. <laughs> Is that show still on the air, by the way? Is that show still on the air? Well, there, it's... Um, and would anybody care if it was? <laughs> it's not being changed, but it's still in repeat. Oh, it's in repeat. They're not making any new ones. Right. Well, they might as well. Nobody saw them when they first ran anyway. Anyway, go ahead. Okay. So what happened is I met one of the interns, right? You met one of the interns? Yeah, I met one of the interns. And what we do is we use... You know how the intern business works in broadcasting? Let me explain this, Bill, uh, for those who do not work in broadcasting. See, the way the intern business works in broadcasting, correct me if I'm wrong, Bill, they find the college student with the largest cup size. <laughs> And then they say, sure, you've got a future in this business, right? Is that how it works, Bill? I just wanted to confirm that, because I've been in this business a long time. I wanted to make sure I wasn't misreading this. All right, go ahead. So you met a, an intern. Right. Okay. And um, we, we used Johnny's dressing room. Johnny Carson's dressing room. Johnny Carson's dressing room! Oh, yes! Oh. Bill, we're still getting over Johnny Carson's dressing room. No, but you're, I'm, I'm not done. I'm not done. Okay. Well, I'm not hanging up on you, Bill. I'm fascinated. Go ahead. We only use them, I'm telling you, for the show. Where it happened was, was on Johnny Carson's monologue star. <laughs> what? Wait, wait, what is that? When Johnny Carson comes out, does his monologue. Yes. That's where it happened. Oh, wait a minute. He's got like a little uh, spot where he's supposed to stand? Yeah, he's a little star. You know, he, you know it's like where he's playing. It's a star. He stands on a little star, and that's how he knows where to stand, and he's in camera range. Exactly. So you were on the mark where Johnny stands to do the monologue. <laughs> oh, they like that here. <laughs> Was this on a Monday night when Johnny took the night off or something, or what? No, it was on a, a, a Friday and Saturday when we taped the show. Oh, really? Friday yeah. and Saturday. Isn't that interesting? Does Jay Leno know about this? I don't think so. Okay, just check. Does Johnny know about it? <laughs> uh, I hope not. Unbelievable. Now, wait a minute. Now, we heard a story the other day. Somebody called in and claimed he worked at uh, Channel 5. Yeah. Yeah, I heard that, yeah. You hear the story, and for people who didn't hear it, uh, this guy claimed that two people were getting it on in a studio at Channel 5, and somebody turned on the camera, and everybody in the building was watching it on monitors. <laughs> How do you know people don't know you did this? Um, I don't know. <laughs> you might be in the next Fred Rogan blooper video, for all you know. <laughs> You didn't think about that, did you? No. That was nice, though. <laughs> you still work at NBC, Bill? No, I don't. What do you do now? Uh, I can't. I can't tell you because then they would know who I am. Oh, we wouldn't want that to happen, would we, gang? No. Sir. Unbelievable. Well, I really appreciate that, and uh, I have a great line for this, but I'm in. Um, I'm on the public airwaves, and I've already been in trouble this year. Okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll come down to tell you person. I'll be happy to. Okay. Thank you for the call. Yeah. Take care. Bye-bye. All right, the weirdest places you ever had sex. I can't tell it. I would love to tell this on the air, but I can't. Uh, anyway, uh, 1017, Tom Likas. I can't. I'll tell you during the break, okay? Seventeen, Tom Mike is live from Gladstones at Pacific Palisades over KFI AM 640. Time to go to the KFI Traffic Center. Here's Liz Fulton. Now we know why the sign on the Johnny Carson show says more to come.
Some people here since 7 o'clock this morning. Uh, next weekend, we'll have the shows you've decided are the best Saturday shows we've done. And we'll find out what they are between 12 and 1 today. And then there'll be a new Saturday schedule after that, which you'll be hearing about here on KFI AM 640. This hour, we're talking about the weirdest places you ever had sex. Here's Renee in Sunset Beach on KFI. Hello. Hi. Hi, Renee. Hi, <laughs> I went to this bar. It's a church. It's, it's called what? It's a sleazy bar in Southern California. Wait, wait, what is it called? <laughs> Turk. What is T R C S? That's a good one. What is the sleaziest bar in Southern California? Oh, no. This is only the second. Oh, you're still lucky, huh? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, so I knew this guy, and I used to go see him maybe once a month or something, and it was the it was the day after my birthday. So I went in and um, I had a few drinks and I went back to his place and then I went back over to church again where he was because he wasn't at his place anyways. So I went in and um, so we started kissing and stuff and we went in the bathroom. <laughs> You went in the bathroom of this sleazy bar. Yeah. Was this under? Wait, wait, wait. Was this under the condom machine? Where were you? No, we were in the girls' bathroom. Oh, I didn't know you were in the girls' bathroom. Yeah. Oh. So we were in the in the bathroom and there were a bunch of people trying to get in, but you know we didn't lay on the floor or anything. Just real sticky and gross. And I heard the women's rooms are much cleaner than the men's rooms. Yeah, today. Oh, even the women are sleazy there, huh? Well, I don't know. I know the guys are. All right, so you didn't want to get on the floor. No. But you were in the women's room. Yeah. At this sleazy bar. How did you feel? Did you feel degraded and disgusted after all of this? No, I'm marrying him. <laughs> She was trying to get in, and she got in, and then she looked under the door, and I guess she saw her feet or something. His ex-girlfriend, let me guess, she was a real bitch, right? <laughs> Oh, you didn't care if she was a bitch. It didn't matter to you. Unbelievable. So you married him. I am married. You are married to him. What happened to the ex-girlfriend? <laughs> yeah, she's waiting on the other line talking about this girl's husband she's been seeing. It was a real bitch. <laughs> Did she wait for you two to come out of the sleazy women's room? Yeah, she tried to get us out. She had to go to the bathroom because there was only one, one stall there. All right, all, right. all right, so once she got in, did she, like, have a word with you? No, I didn't even see her. I was busy. <laughs> well, boy, you sound proud of this, Renee. Well, I love him. He's my honey. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Well, Renee, it sounds like an exciting uh, love story oh, at that yeah. sleazy bar. Oh, yeah. Would you recommend this bar to other people? Uh, I don't know. Looking for a good time? Yeah. Well, I don't know. I don't mind there. Hey, you never know where you'll meet. I, I like that. I found mine at a sleazy bar. Okay. <laughs> well, I'll bet it was. Right. Renee, thank you for the call. Okay. Take care. Bye-bye. Is that Caesar? Caesar in San Pedro, you're on KFI. Hello. Hi, Tom, how are you? Okay. Hey, I love your show and I'm sorry to see you go on a Saturday. Well, we'll still be here during the week. <laughs> okay. Uh, listen, well, I was in the service about three years and they decided to have a family day. Uh, a family a day in the service? Yeah, we were out in the field for about two weeks now and they decided to bring our wives out there. Oh. And girlfriends or friends, male friends, whoever you wanted to bring. Wait. What do you mean, male friends? Hey, you know, in the military? They, that's what, anybody that you wanted to bring can come out. Uh-huh. <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, uh, my wife came out, and uh, we were just ready to shoot a gunnery, and uh, we let us take our wives and friends on the tank. And, uh, well, we climbed on in there, and, you know, before we knew it... Uh, you climbed down, wait a minute, you climbed down where? Down inside the turret of the tank. You were in the tank turret? Yeah. 
Best kids hanging around. Well, well, I guess they got about down there to where, where the uh, leaders could see them, see? And uh, they looked over there and saw it, and so they got everybody up on double time. <laughs> now there's a whole troop of Boy Scouts running down this trail backwards. <laughs> Very <laughs> nice, to the lake to where, where can we go? Yeah. Unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, you should have known the Boy Scout motto there, you know? Yeah. Be prepared, so you would have been, you would have been all set. They could have taught you something. <laughs> Thank you, Chad. You bet. Take care. Bye bye. Here comes Arlene in Fountain Valley on KFI. Hi, Arlene. Hi, Tom. I'm in trouble. You're in trouble. Is there. What? She screams. Did you hear her scream? Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> if she mentions it to her dad, dad, okay? Oh. Well, go ahead and tell us the story. Okay. It happened many years ago. I love that disclaimer. That, like, kind of means okay, you know. This happened many years ago. I killed 15 people, but it was many years ago. Many years ago, so. Just forget I ever did. Okay. This happened many years ago, Arlene. Yes, go ahead. Okay. This was back east. My husband was a member of the Volunteer Fire Department in a little town in Long Island. It, wait, which town was this? Long Beach. Long Beach is not such a little town, Arlene. Okay. I know Long Beach, Long Island. Long Island. Volunteer Fire Department, so. Yes. Okay, well, we decided that there hadn't been a fire in a couple of weeks. Things were kind of boring. Uh-huh. We um, borrowed the fire engine. You borrowed the fire engine? <laughs> And what exactly did you do with it? Uh, we decided to make our own fire. So did you take the fire engine somewhere else, or did you use it right at the firehouse? Down to the beach. You took the fire engine down to the beach. To the submarine racer. Uh, yeah, I know. Remember that one? What? Um, the original engine worked within the last year. And he confessed to me that... One of the main reasons he divorced is that his wife was holding that stress. Uh huh. And that this, this is the reason why it was too big for her. No, no, so we got to bleep that. We can't let that on the air because the FCC will be after us. But do you, everybody here in the crowd, did we bleep that, Greg? Good, we censored that. Uh, I understand the problem, though, there, Janet. All right, so let me uh, put this in a delicate way that won't get us in any trouble now that we bleep that, okay? Okay, I'm sorry. That, no, it's okay, Janet. We're all trying to figure out what the Fed will let us get away with. Uh, your brother-in-law got a divorce because um, his uh, wife was um, in pain. <laughs> Would that be a fair statement? Yeah. Okay. So she got a divorce. Well, no, he got the divorce from her. Oh, he, I, uh, wait, I thought she was in pain, so she asked for divorce. No, he got the divorce because he wasn't getting any. 
And so now you'd like to uh, help him out. Well, no, but I'm having thoughts to that. You know, every, I see him a lot, and it's like, you know, you wonder. You feel badly for him? Is that what you're trying to tell me? Well, he feels his yeah. pain. <laughs> well, I, I know he just comes out. He has another girlfriend. Oh, I see. Every time I see him, it's like, I'm wondering. Have you ever discussed this with him about your interest? No. No. Now, what is the matter with your husband that you're having sinful thoughts about his brother? Uh, my husband's just fine. It's just, you know, for... You just can't get enough. No, I get enough. It's just for my... You know, when I see him, it's just... You know, my mind just wanders, I guess. It does. Yeah, what a waste. Now, <laughs> what are you... Now, Janet, be honest with me. What are you planning on doing? about this. Tell me the truth, Janet. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I think I'm just going to have to live with it. Oh, you don't sound like you're going to live with it because you called me to talk about it today. Well? I think you want to do something about it. Am I right? Uh, if my husband was to drop off the face of the earth, I probably could. Well, what if your husband uh, dropped into a business trip for a week and a half? <laughs> Oh, yeah. No, I, 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 I have to. I know. You do. Uh, let me ask the audience a question. Do people believe Janet here? No! It's unanimous, Janet. We all know where you're coming from. Are you telling me I should act on this? Yeah. I'm not telling you to act on it. You're waiting for me to say, oh, go for it, Janet, aren't you? That's what you want me to do. Isn't that true, Janet? You want me to say go for it so you'll feel better about it. Isn't that true? Tell her! Tell her! Tell her! Do you believe Janet? No. She's calling for permission, isn't she? Yeah! I just wanted to come because I felt it was needed. You felt it was needed, and you're, yeah, yeah come on, you're, you're telling me that you're going to stop having sinful thoughts about your brother-in-law after this call now? No. You're telling me that you absolutely, now you've got to tell me the truth, Janet, this is Father Lycus you're talking to. You're telling me absolutely, positively, you will not have sex with your brother-in-law, ever. Well. <laughs> well, then when, Janet? I probably would. Yeah, but your husband, he knows the way home, right? He's got a triple-A map in the car and everything. <laughs> He's not going to disappear. Um, I guess you're right. I'm right about what, Janet? Uh, he won't disappear. He won't disappear, but you'll still have sinful thoughts, won't you? Yeah. And then what are you going to do? I don't know. Oh! We've gotten this far now, Janet. Before you said absolutely not, now you say you don't know what you would do. You're thinking about it, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> oh, Janet. Janet, we could see through you like a pane of glass, you know? Okay. So, Janet, just give me a time frame here. How long will you be able to hold out before you do the dirty deed with your brother in law who caused um, well, such pain in his relationship? <laughs> He was staying with you. No, he was. I, that's what I said. He was staying with you. And now he's not. He has a girlfriend, so, you know. So, uh, so the main reason is not your husband. The main reason is that he's got a girlfriend. Yeah. No. Yeah. The main reason is my husband. Uh, does the audience believe that? No! No, they don't. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, Janet, uh, I mean, come on now. Were they right or what? Well, I know that, but you see, everybody confesses for a reason. And I think the reason you're confessing this is because you want to sleep with your brother-in-law and you were hoping that you would call in the radio and that I would say, Janet, go for it! Yeah. Yeah. Do it, baby! Yeah. Go for it! Yeah. You were hoping I'd say that. Yeah. Weren't you, Janet? Give her some guidance, Father. Maybe it's 
side, I guess. So Janet, give us the time frame. How long will it be before this actually happens? I, I really can't say, Tom. You can't say? No. Less than a year? Oh. Anything's take a move. possible, I guess. Anything's possible! Hi to your husband for me. <laughs> He's apparently lacking something his brother has. <laughs> no, never mind, don't say it, I don't know. No, I don't want to bleep again. Thank you. Thank you for the call. Thank you. We'll Here's Trisha in Calabasas on KFI. Hi, Trisha. Hi, Father Mike. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Well, thank you for that. Well, one thing that's been here is a couple of seven years ago. My boyfriend and I broke up. So. Yeah. You were living with him at the time. Well, no, but I was All right. And then about a week before he got to the And I thought, I just wanted to kill him. I got a bottle of Michael, and I spoiled and I took the phone with and I moved out. And about three months later, he asked me to marry him. Oh. Uh -huh. I went over there, and there was these poor players. They were all he asked you to marry him, and you actually like started talking to him again and stuff? Yeah, I married him. You married him, but you came over there, and you pretended you didn't know what happened to his poor plants. <laughs> oh, now, did you feel badly about that? Well, I felt bad for You felt bad for the plants? I didn't feel bad for him. I felt sort of bad that I did that plants. Unbelievable. Well, Tricia, that certainly isn't as big a sin as some we've heard this hour, but thank you for giving us a breather here. <laughs> I appreciate the call. Let's continue with Linda in Woodland Hills on KFI. Hi, Linda. Hi, Tom. Tom, I love you, Tom. Thank you. Say hi to the crowd here. Hi. Say hi to the crowd here at Gladstone. Hi. Going over the Aren't you sorry you didn't come? Really Shouldn't she be sorry she didn't yeah. come? Yeah. Don't you feel bad now? No. There'll never be another Saturday show. This was it. Okay. I know. I'm really sorry to hear that. I it will it never happen on a Saturday again. Oh, and you missed it. I really like this show, Tom. It's great. Oh, well, thank you. Don't feel badly about not being here today. Okay. Just because it's the last Saturday show and you missed it. And this huge crowd showed up today and everybody's having a good time. Do not feel badly about that. <laughs> anyway, what is your confession? Well, okay, this is really difficult for me to stay on the air because um, I've been staying around this uh, guilt for the last 10 years. Uh -huh. I um, I had a child at age 16. I had a son. Uh -huh. And um, about 10 years ago, um, of course, he had friends coming over to the house. And uh, uh, I don't look my age. I look you know, a little bit younger. And my friends were, um, I mean, my son's friends, uh, always say they're an attraction for me. I mean, they, you know, they would um, sit down and that, well, there was one friend, there was one friend in particular. How old is your son? Uh, my son is now 22, I'm 38. How old was he then? He was, um, 18, no, he was 17. He was 17 and he had friends, and how old were they? Well, this one friend that he had in particular is, uh, was, he was, all right, his friend was 16, right. you were about 33 at the time, right. but you looked younger. Yes. All right, so this is your son's 16-year-old friend. Right. All right, go ahead. Well, he would come over to the, to the house quite often, and um, 
and we would sometimes drop by when my son was not home. Uh -huh. And he started helping me around the house and helping me. And so, you know, I knew what he wanted. Well, this one evening, he dropped by and... He dropped by in the evening when your son wasn't there and you knew what he wanted. Right. Okay. And they didn't come on to me, and I said, you know, push him away, and saying, no, this is not right, you know, I can't do this, you're my son's friend, and, um, uh, well, I finally, uh, stayed in, I couldn't go with this, because if there was any longer, I was, um, you know, I didn't have any commitments at the time, I was lonely, and, uh, Feeling sorry for you. Everyone give us a mock one. Ready? Oh. Uh, anyway. <laughs> yes. The, um, I did. I went to bed with him. How was it? Well, I was just going to get to that. Oh! We're all waiting with bated breath. There are people standing here watching me, waiting for the answer to this. It was so good. I was, I was shocked. You were shocked. He was 16 and he was that good. Yes, he was a lot better than other men that I had slept with. That I, 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 I couldn't believe it. I needed to, you know, everything. And, um, now you see, if a man called in and told this story about a 16-year-old girl, they'd all be throwing tomatoes at me like that. But because it's a woman, isn't this interesting? A woman can call in and go, ooh. So, now what happened after it was all over, as you were basking in the afterglow of statutory rape? Of course, it was a one-time thing, and it could never happen again, and my son could never find out, and, uh, and I thought, okay, well, it did happen on one other occasion. Oh, it happened again, though! When was this, the night of the prom? <laughs> Another lonely night. Yeah. I thought you were going to tell me you were chaperoning at the prom or something. And... Yeah, nothing like that. Nothing like that, huh? So uh, that was it, twice only. That was it. And that was the, now you, I thought you were telling me now you're married to him or something. Oh, no, no, nothing like that. Nothing okay, like that. Um, although I did see him about a month ago at a family function, and uh, he came over to me and was, you know, telling me that uh, he still would like to get together sometime, and he said, no way. Yeah, and you said, no, I could never do that. No, it would be terrible. You're my son's friend, and that would be wrong, and you're seeing him next Friday, oh, right? No. <laughs> No, no, I could never do it again. <laughs> you never do it again. Okay. You're sure? And my son has never found out. He's never found out. Hopefully he's not listening. To oh, hopefully he's not. Okay. <laughs> Linda, thank I, you. Thank I feel much better, Tom. Do you feel better? Yeah. Well, go. Cool. That's what we're here for. This is a public service, as you know. Thank you for the call. <laughs> Take care. We'll continue. 11.56, 4 now before 12 noon. Tom Like is live from Gladstones over KFI AM 640. Four of our final Saturday show ever. Stay tuned. I'm Tom Likas. It's 12 noon in Los Angeles.
John Melikar today at 4, and Dr. Laura Schlesinger tonight at 8. That's our lineup here on KFI AM 640. Thank you for tuning in this afternoon. And uh, next Saturday, we're going to have four hours in this time slot of some of our favorite shows that we've done on Saturday. It's a different animal Saturday show, if you've heard today for the first time. It's different from what we do during the week. Uh, it's generally not news-oriented. It's generally done for fun. And uh, we've done a variety of shows, many of which got us in trouble. In fact, two of the three shows that got us in trouble with the FCC happened on Saturday morning, as you might guess. Uh, yeah, people like that. Okay, fine, yeah. And, um, and you know, the, the, it's the kind of show that I, I'm going to miss doing, but we're going to do shows like this during the week from time to time when things are slow. So um, what we're doing next week, we're going to take four hours, uh, probably one hour of each of four different shows that you liked a lot from a Saturday. Now, don't call in and say, oh, I really like that show where you talked about Proposition 103. I mean, <laughs> that's not the kind of show we're talking about, okay? You know what the Saturday shows are like. They're different. They're um, fun. So of all the fun shows we've done on Saturday, pick one that you like the most, and we're listening to what you're saying, and we're this week going to go through the archives, and we're going to pick four one-hour segments of shows and play them next Saturday in this time slot. So here's the telephone number if you'd like to tell us your favorite Saturday show. Also, people here at Gladstones are welcome to come up and tell us in person. We'll talk to you live in our final hour today, and we'll be hanging out here at Gladstones for a while after the show is over today, so I will try to talk to everybody today. I know everybody's getting short shrift. You know, it's funny. Everybody comes down with an agenda. You know, everybody has a half-hour speech they want to make, and there's like a couple of hundred people here. I can't talk for 20 minutes to everybody. It's not physically possible. I'm trying, but it's not possible. Here are the telephone numbers if you're sitting at home or if you're at the phone booth here at Gladstones today. In L.A. and the Valleys, 5201-KFI is our telephone number. From the 213 or the 818 area codes, it's 5201-KFI. Or call us toll-free from Orange County or the Inland Empire, 1-800-553-4640. If you're in the 714 area code, 619 or 805, call 1-800-553-4640. We'll pay for your telephone call and put you on the air. You can tell us your favorite show, or you can tell us something that happened on a Saturday program that you'll remember after we're done doing this show. Because we tried to make it special, we tried to make it a little different. We want to see if we left any impression or not. Maybe we didn't, I don't know. Let's start with Debbie in Anaheim on KFI. Hi, Debbie. Hi, Tom. I'm going to miss you. Debbie, I didn't know you cared. I love you. I love you. Why did you hear her? Yes, Debbie. The best Debbie show was the one with the weird sex noises. Weird sex sounds. That was the show where people called in and imitated the weirdest sex sound they ever heard. That was a wild show. I don't know how we, you know what? I don't know how we got away with that show. Well, it was hysterical. I mean, the people were great. They were great. That was one of the funniest shows I remember, too. It stuck in your head, so to speak, yeah? All right, Debbie, we'll look for that one and see if we can put it on the air and do it without recrimination. Thank you, Debbie. All right, we'll talk to you during the week. Here's Bob in North Hollywood on KFI. Hi, Bob. Oh. How are you? Oh, I'm great. Good. Listen, the first time I ever got introduced to you uh, was on a Saturday, and you were so upset with the callers, you were ready to walk off. Do you remember that? That happened a couple of times, Bob. What was the topic that day? Oh, man, I don't remember. I think we probably missed it. We were driving in the car, but you just went on for at least five minutes, maybe ten minutes, how you were going to leave and these massive kids turn off the radio. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah, I remember. I remember. There were some times you came out on Saturday morning, and, you know, people just want you to do the show, you know? They don't want to participate. They just say, yeah, this is a great show. Just keep it up, Tom. Like I'm supposed to do it without calls or something, you know? And uh, you may recall the last week of 1989, the Saturday, the first two hours I didn't take a single call. I just told this long story about what it was like to be in radio. Any calls on that 
Oh, I think because I was fed up with taking calls. Oh, yeah. I got a question. All right, Bob. Okay, we went on for quite a while about the uh, word talk radio. Do you remember that? Yes. What the heck happened? Well, there, don't you, you see? You know, we talk about this stuff. Uh, my life is a soap opera, and so is the life of the radio station. <laughs> so I, when I tell a story 20 times, I start getting impatient, like saying, why weren't you listening that day? Okay. But I will tell you, Bob. Yeah? I'm not telling why I don't have a vasectomy today, though. That one I'm done with. For the time <laughs> but, um, no, the uh, story is that there was a court case, and the judge apparently just did not understand that the term talk radio is used generically across the country. And so they came up with this weird decision where we can call what we are talk radio. We just can't say those words next to KFI or next to 640, but we can say them anywhere else. Oh my gosh. So we can say KFI AM 640, more stimulating talk radio. As long as more stimulating is stuck in between there. Right. Do you understand that distinction? Does anybody understand what that means? No, no we don't. in Los Angeles on KFI at 1213. Hello. Hello, Tom. Great show. Great show. Love it. Thank you. So, about a month ago, you did a show um, about black and white racism in America. Yes. And um, you had a guy on there who was a member of, uh, um, what's the guy? Um, John Jackson. Oh, a guy who was a member of the Nation of Islam. Right, right. And yeah. then you had another guy on there who was, uh, you know, who was like an you know, American native. And they both were just going at it, I mean, for like maybe 15 or 20 minutes. It was so great. I was wondering if you could do that segment. And also, you had that call and call in about the University of Life. Remember that one? Oh, yes, yes. the University of Life. I remember that call, but I don't remember what the topic was that day. Do you? Uh, well, I, I don't really know the topic. See, we write on the box. We write the topic when we put these tapes away. Yes. So we don't write every single call that happened in the hour, so it's kind of hard to know. Uh, maybe somebody else will remember what show the University of Life Call came in on. Okay, well, if you can't do this show, well, why don't you just put together an hour of, of um, callers that you just blew off the air? Just do a whole lot. Just an hour of callers that you blew off. We'll see what we can do, Bob. Thanks for the call. Great, right, no problem. Good work. Thank you. Here's Pauline in the City of Commerce on KFI. Hi, Pauline. How are you? I'm doing great. Um, I like the one where you have that, that taste you put in your mouth and everything. I don't know, the weirdest thing you put in your mouth on a Saturday. Oh, the grossest thing you ever put in your mouth. Did anybody here hear that program? Yeah! Yeah, some people here heard it. You like that show? Yeah, that was great. I'd like to hear that again. All right. Well, we're taking it all into consideration here, Pauline. Thank you for the call. Okay, you too. Bye-bye. Here comes Donna from Riverside on KFI. Hi, Donna. Hi. How are you this morning? I'm doing all kinds of This is my favorite Saturday show because I can stand here and drink mimosas and talk to a big crowd. This is as good as it gets. I'm saying this now from talk radio to live radio. What? I'm saying this now from talk radio to live radio. Well, it's just live. We're turning talk radio to a spectator sport. That's my aim in the 1990s. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to go back to one of the first shows that you did when you came to KFI. One of the first? It was on a Saturday? It was on a Saturday. All right. Yeah. We're giving us the cause of most divorces in the whole world. It wasn't money, it wasn't children, it was toilet. It was what? Toilet seat. Toilet seats, the toilet seat show. Right. Oh yes, do you leave the toilet seat up or down? Right. No, and about, people got really angry about that talk. About six or seven months ago on the home show. Yeah. So on early in the morning. No, wait, I've been on the home show. The home show talked about this? They talked about an invention that somebody had come up and I said, be the rest of her time show. And I was wondering if you're getting your 10%. It's called the P. Let me take a piece of paper. 
And what does it do? Under $10, you can correct this whole problem in your family. And how does it work? So oh, well, how does it correct? Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. How does it correct the problem, Donna? It beeps. It beeps when it's up or it beeps when it's down. Which is it? You don't know. All I know is that the beep under $10. I guess they ran out of crocheting to do on the home show and they had to put something else on. Unbelievable. Thank you for the call. Take care, Donna. We'll continue. More of your calls. We're asking people to call in and tell us their favorite memory of our Saturday show and which show they'd like to hear us rerun next Saturday because we're going to run four of our favorite hours. And you're going to help us decide what they are during this hour. Take a person at dinner the other night. It ought to be interesting. It'll be Sam Kinison, along with Al Goldstein, who was here earlier, the publisher of Screw Magazine, and porn star Ron Jeremy. They'll all be here in studio, in person, right here on KFI, Monday at 2 o'clock. This is our last Saturday show. This is it. Next Saturday, four hours of your favorite Saturday shows. And that will be the last time we appear on Saturday. This is our live Saturday show and the last one until 1 o'clock today. We're finding out which ones were your favorite Saturday programs. Here's Greg in Encino on KFI. Hi, Greg. Hi, Tom. How are you? I'm um, doing great. What's up? Well, I was, uh, I was thinking back, and I know you don't usually uh, run programs over from uh, Friday to Saturday, but I can remember a topic on a Friday, and you ran it all the way into Saturday, and that was from the hung jury. I just rolled. The hung jury. Remember that one? That was a favorite in Washington, D.C., as I recall, as well. You may not know that. Well, maybe you do. They love that in Washington. That was that was just hilarious. These women calling in and the guys calling in and everyone wanting to be a member. And the, I, I better recall the fellow that uh, was actually the president or founder of it. He couldn't be a member of his own organization. Well, what happened also was that men hated that show. <laughs> and women all called the station for the next two weeks asking for the address of the organization. Right. So it sounds like it what does that tell? It, it definitely was. I don't think there's any way we could run that again without getting in trouble again, but I certainly agree with you. It was one of the best. Well, maybe you could go through and bleep out half of it. <laughs> I'd have to bleep out about eight-tenths of it. But thank you for the call. All right, Tom. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye. Here's Brian in Chula Vista on KFI. Brian, you could have driven 100 miles and come to see us today. Oh, sure, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, your car's in the shop. Oh, okay. So you get a little cheap thrills on the radio today. Oh, you bet. You bet. Um, I have to tell you, Tom, uh, first, uh, thanks for your album, man. It's a huge a minute. It's hysterical. Thank you. You don't know his life is like um, uh, But I got to say, the best Saturday show you ever had, I mean, it wasn't funny or anything. It was like, sad, actually, because I think it was during the time where you were looking at the time for your breakup process. When I was breaking up with my ex-wife. This is the show. Uh, my second ex-wife. <laughs> I gotta be specific. That was my second ex-wife. Tom, I just had a great girl show. You remember that one? Yes. Where your friend called us on the East Coast. And uh yeah, so basically that you can't be friends with someone you want to work with. Yeah, exactly. Yes, we did a few of those shows in fact. Yeah. Yeah, I heard that one um at about four o'clock in the morning during daylight service kind of really bad. Oh, you heard a repeat of the show. Yeah. Uh-huh. And you'd like to hear that again? Yeah, please. I'd love to record that one. I will check and see if we have it. All right. Thank you, Brian. Bye. Take care. Here's Herb calling from Oxnard. Boy, they're calling from everywhere today. Hi, Herb. Hey, Tom. How are you? Tom, fine. But I'm not going to ask you how you are because you don't like people to ask you that. Thank you! Okay, buddy. Hey, my favorite show was Where Do You Find the Ugliest People. Remember that one? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Where Do the Ugly People Hang Out? Now that was not that was not a Saturday show, but it could have been. Yeah, well today this should be a Saturday show because we're all up there and I'm here at the strawberry festival. I thought the ugly people owned Oxnard. I didn't think they just were at the strawberry festival. I mean, I, I've gone up to Oxnard for a date. Can you believe that? No. I had a, well, unfortunately, it was somebody who did not live in Oxnard at the time. 
uh, who uh, took me up there. I don't know why, I was asked to go. So I went. But then I saw what else hung out up there. I don't mean to offend anybody in Oxnard. No, yeah, I do, okay? Look. <laughs> I saw some pretty ugly pusses up there. What, what are you going to do? Oh, that's the way life is. Thank you, Herb. Take care. Bye-bye. Here's Dan in Long Beach on KFI. Hello. Hey, Tom. Dan. Hey, you sound like you're doing great. I'm having a great time here. Yeah. It's getting better all the time. All right, man. That's what we like to hear. Uh, hey, look, my favorite show, Saturday show, had to be the Love Noises. Sex sounds. Yeah. Now you're the second person to mention sex sounds today. Yeah, that, that, that was good. I like and the other one uh, the, one of the previous callers at home, Jerry, man, you want man, the little guys were getting nervous, man. <laughs> Why are the little guys nervous? Well, I made mean, most guys nervous. Yeah, Tom, uh, we, uh, you, we, 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 no, 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 I know this conversation's gonna go, Dan. Let's move on to the next call. Dan doesn't know where to stop, but I can tell where he's gonna go. Uh, Jim and Chatsworth, you're on KFI. Hello. Jim. Where is Jim from Chatsworth? Hello? Jim! You did a show about that drug cartoon on Saturday? About what? The drug cartoon. The drug cartoon. That was just a few weeks ago. All right. Um, Dan, how you don't think kids listen to Bugs Bunny? You, you just totally went off. Yes, that's right. Anyway, um, people who call in don't have the facts straight. They call in and, and lie to the screeners, you know, to worm their way out of the air. Yeah, I know about that, and I uh, we have a big problem with that. People lie about things, and uh, they try to uh, get on the air and say things that they shouldn't be saying. And somehow I suspect, Jim, that you're one of them. Let's move on here, here at KFI. We just hung up on him. Let's go to the next one. Trisha in Calabasas. You're on KFI. Hello. Bob in Tustin. You're on KFI. Hello, Bob. I, I can sniff these guys out after a while. Yeah, Bob. I'm okay. What's that? <laughs> I'm at Gladstones in Pacific Palisades, Dad. I've been saying it now for three days. You. Is everybody having a good time? Oh yes, I said that um, I wanted people to call in and describe hell. The guy who said he came back from uh, the dead. Yeah, and we played the current affair theme, that's right. Yeah, I'm glad you liked it. I'll, I'll look for that. Describe hell. That was a fun one. I'm going to make that better because your better shows are usually great. Well, Bob, we're going to try to do some of this stuff during the week now that we don't have to save it for Saturday. All right, that's cool. Okay? All right. All right, we'll see you later. Take care. Morgan Call's coming up. Our last 20 minutes coming up here. It's 1241, 19 now, before 1 o'clock. Tom Mike is Saturday afternoon live over KFI. AM 640. All right, it's 12:46 now, 14 minutes before one o'clock. Tom Mike is live over KFI AM 640, and I've lost the connection to the studio again. So I don't know if you're looking to find the connection, but uh, meantime. I'm going to talk to some people in person here. We've been asking people on our final Saturday show to call in and tell us their favorite Saturday program. I don't know what happened here. I think I picked something up in the wire move. Is that it? Is that what uh, I don't know. They're trying to put everything back together here. Meantime, uh, did somebody want to come up here and talk to me? Because uh, we got a couple of you got to come up here because I'm wired in. Uh, the 5201 KFI in LA and the Valley is a toll free 1 800 553 4640. Or the Inland Empire. Everybody wants to come up, that's fine. Meantime, we'll talk to Tony in heaven on KFI. Hello, Tony. Hi. 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 There's a break you of that. Oh, why? Are you old? I'm old. Oh, you drive an Oldsmobile? No, no, no. Tom Mike says you do not drive Oldsmobile. As you know. Thank you. Uh, oh, yes. Uh, you know, I'm still getting calls. 
for Steve and Paul at home. That, and for people who didn't hear that show, um, somebody got a hold of my... I, I later found out, I thought they'd gotten a hold of my number. Actually, uh, somebody has a number that's one digit off from mine. And they've been putting their number on a gay 976 line. I think it's 976 meat. I'm not kidding. And so I get calls at all hours of the day and night, like 3 in the morning, these gay guys calling me up on the phone. Hello, Steve. No, this isn't Steve. Oh, is Steve there? No. When will he be in? He won't be in. He doesn't live here. Oh, come on. It's okay. I know you're married. You can admit it. Come on, Steve. I had one guy. I'm going to clean this up for the air. I had one guy call me up from the gay 976 number. He called me up one time, and he told me what he wanted to do to me. So I said to him at the time, I said, look, pal, um, I'm married. I'm straight, okay? I'm not interested in what you want to do to me, all right? You, you got it? I'm married. And so he says to me, this is absolutely true, verbatim, he says to me, well, what's the difference, a man or a woman in the dark? Who can tell? Just lie back and enjoy it. Station, have a guy like me do six days a week.